China and the U.S. make a cosmic connection, sharing information that helped China land its spacecraft on the far side of the moon. China's space agency says NASA helped monitor the landing of the Chang'e 4, the first soft landing on the moon's far side. NASA provided information from its satellite in lunar orbit, and China shared the time and coordinates of the intended landing. Well, NASA has not commented on the collaboration. A U.S. law bans joint space projects with China without congressional approval. Michael Wall is a senior writer for the website Space.com, and he is optimistic that will change and open up a galaxy of possibilities. I would like to see more, more collaboration between China and the U.S. and between all, all the nations of the world in space exploration. I think this is a global endeavor that we're embarking on as, as like a world community. And I personally would, would, would sort of like to see a lot more cooperation. But there are people who are more on the political side of things who, who, who definitely worry and are more in line with, with that wording of the 2011 amendment that banned cooperation without a congressional approval, who worry that you know, this sort of cooperation could lead to, to China developing uh, yeah, I mean, greater space, space capabilities, greater space technology. Um, there, there are people on, on the political right, mostly, who, who are very worried about China's prowess in space and what, what they, they could end up doing, it, doing with it down the road. So has this Chinese moon mission inspired NASA perhaps to conduct its own trip to the far side of the moon, or was that something that was already in the works? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's explicitly like in the works. I mean, NASA has, has said that they like want to, 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 to go explore like the lunar far side. There are a lot of reasons for it. First of all, just sheer exploration, going somewhere that we don't know very much about. But also, it's very quiet on the far side of the moon. You know, it, it, it always faces away from Earth. So it doesn't have any of the noise that we're constantly blasting out into space from our transmitters, all, all this like radio noise that's pouring away from our planet just in the background. That, that doesn't get to the far side of the moon. So it's really quiet over there. And you, you could theoretically build a big radio telescope there and do all sorts of really interesting observations, like, like yeah, like very cool science work. Um, so yeah, I mean, NASA's talked about trying to do that. Um, I, I don't think it's explicitly in like like sort of in their plans, but just like I mean, a broad base exploration of of the moon, putting people back on the moon. That's that's definitely in NASA's plans. NASA plans to actually put boots back on the moon by like the late 2020s or or thereabouts, hopefully. And you had just said that the collaboration between China and NASA was significant. What excites you the most about it, and why do you feel that way? Space exploration is, it's, it's like a global activity, and it's, it's something that, I mean, in my opinion anyway, I think what, that, that we should be undertaking as a global community. Um, there's so much to do. It's, so, it's such a, a, a broad undertaking, and it's going to be so expensive, and there's so much to learn that there's just no way that, that any one country can, can, do it to, or to, can, can do it by itself. Um, it's something that, that, that we should undertake together. And it's, it's, like, it's also one of the ways that I think we can kind of break down barriers that, that, that kind of exist like, between countries. Um, if you find a place to collaborate, then, that, then, then that'll exchange ideas. That'll, that'll help countries that maybe didn't trust each other all that much start trusting each other again a little bit more, working toward a common goal. Uh, these, these, these might be pie-in-the-sky ideas, and there are some people who would probably think that's pretty naive. But I mean, scientific cooperation and collaboration can, can go a long ways toward Toward sort of yeah, I mean, breaking down some of these barriers that that like we've erected between ourselves here on Earth. Michael Wall, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Sure thing. Thanks for having me.